Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a new kind of uh, experimental uh, version of Sleep With Me we've never done before. So welcome. These are just bedtime stories from our podcast, Sleep With Me. And make them feel fresh. These ones are from a couple years ago. Uh, so, so, so if you're a regular listener, you might get a refresh. And if you're new, these are just bedtime stories uh, from a show called Sleep With Me. They're strange, they're meandering, they're a little bit different. And all this is made possible by listeners like you, regular listeners like you. And so I just want to let you know, that's how we're able to put the show out. And uh, so if you uh, are a fan of Sleep With Me, you listen to it on a regular basis, please consider supporting the show. You get ad-free episodes, you get ad-free story-only episodes, tons of other cool stuff at Sleep With Me Plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. But if you're in a position and you have some money every month or you say, hey, maybe I don't watch that streaming service, I'd rather give it to a podcast. Think about your favorite podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me and support that podcast. If it is Sleep With Me, I can support the show, be great. But if it isn't or there's a podcast you listen to, way more, brings you a lot of value during the day. Please support that podcast. Podcast is going through a different time right now. And your favorite podcast, uh, the one you get the most out of, uh, could use your support the most. Uh, so consider supporting it however they request support. Uh, just check it out, like listen to the show or check out their website. Or consider supporting Sleep With Me. If the if Sleep With Me, you say, oh, no, Sleep With Me is the one I listen to the most. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Thanks. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the only podcaster who gives you earworms about Elton John songs in a, like a way you never thought was possible. Because that's when I say, cut me gently, I'm an elbow. As I cut my elbows in a self-soothing way. And I, when I self-soothe me, this is not a joke, I could be here to soothe you. So cut me gently. That's what an elbow would sing. If it, there was an Elton, Elton John the Elbow, if there was a Sleep With Me program, there would be a skit where an elbow that was like uh, dressed, like designed like Elton John in a, probably a duck suit, and the elbow would say, it would be a self-soothing segment, and the elbow would say, cut me gently, I'm an elbow. And you, if, but if you just tuned in, you'd say, what in that, what am I? And I'd say, yep, you're in the right place. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And here's a couple of ways. When your hand hits that fridge tomorrow, these are the ways we're able to be here for you free twice a week. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a quick message here. Uh, if you get a lot out of Sleep With Me, if you're a regular listener, you like these new things we're trying out, like the story-only version of the show. If you're new, don't worry about any of this. But if you're a regular listener of Sleep With Me or you're a regular listener of any podcast, if you have a favorite podcast uh, and it's not Sleep With Me, that's totally cool. If you have podcasts you listen to way more or you get way more value out of, I totally understand that. Consider supporting that podcast. Uh, podcasting is an industry is kind of going through a weird phase right now. It's direct support from listeners is going to be, it seems like it's going to be the future of most shows. And so consider supporting the podcast you really love, and uh, you could do that. You could find out. You could listen, listen to the show, and see how they ask it to be supported, um, and or reach out to them. And say, hey, how can I support you? Or if you can't afford, uh, you know, a few dollars a month, you say, hey, how else can I support you? But if Sleep With Me is the one, you, Sleep With Me Plus is the best way to support Sleep With Me. Sign up for Sleep With Me Plus. Not only you get an unbelievably sweet, different ways to listen to the show. But it's a huge help uh, for us to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, but, yeah, think about what your favorite podcast is and then go ahead and go to their website or, or if you already know how, how they like to be supported, support that show. Uh, thanks and good night. All right, everybody, Scoots here. This isn't one of these uh, experimental episodes, I guess. Uh, it came up right out of the intro. One of these unexpected ones where I said – in an intro recently, it's been, I think it's been a week since I did the intro because I wanted to do a little bit of digging. Uh, but I said, what if I sent my laundry or my clothes Valentine's? I think it originally started out as the idea of like a way to make amends for my clothes. But this is good where ideas come up in the intro that could be an episode and then I let it breathe for a week or two. Because then I started thinking about. And of course, my, my my mind 
only came up with a couple ideas, but I said, what if I may, what if I gave Valentine to with some of my favorite pieces of clothing throughout my life? Because I'm one of those people, and I'm sure a lot of listeners can relate. And this will come up in the Valentines, but you know, I had my favorite pieces of clothing, and I would wear them pretty much nonstop. And, and in different phases of my life, even to this point in my life now, I mean, during obviously during 2020 and 2021, it was a little bit different. And uh, we, like, like so, we got my clothes got a lot more wear. wear uh, I got it. They got into. We got into a groove. Got in a comfortable relationship, uh, uh, and that was easy. And now that uh, 2021, when I'm recording this, or 2022, when you're hearing this, uh, you know, my my daughter was going back to school. I w- have been working at a co-working place, so I do have to dress uh, more appropriately than if I'm chilling out at the house. So th- that's what I was thinking. I said, okay. So that's kind of where it came from. But then even as a kid, you know, I was the oldest to six kids. So my parents had to get clothes for not just one kid, but six kids. And also, more. this is more about me than my parents or the circumstances is. And I, I guess I've, as I've learned to grow, and and for me, it was like part of my growing up process as an adult and being sober and stuff like that, where finally I still do this kind of stuff. But like uh, where I said, oh, like clothing for me was always this one day aspirational thing or I was already lost and kind of like so mixed in with fantasy and I guess esteem in that sense and aspiration or the inverse side of that, like, oh, if only, uh, like, uh, wow. So now I guess I'm getting a, a bit, a bit more is coming to me. So this is good. Uh, I may have to pause it and grab a pen. Okay. So I just wrote down some stuff that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be distracted by trying to remember it, but, uh, it, it did while I was writing it down and realized that some of this hits a pretty tender places. So I'll try to be, but I'll try to do that. Like, uh, be tender in this investigation because, and, and I think that's a way it is for a lot of people. So I'm going to try to ha- really handle this with kid gloves, some parts of it, because like I said, for me, uh, to, I guess to kind of elaborate before we get into it, that way I can kind of soothe as we go here, is uh, that there's an idea that, uh, like, oh, one, things would have been better if I had better clothes, which uh, maybe the the way to look at it now is a neutral party or, like, like as a parent myself, it's to say, what tools can I give you where we could consent to say yes and, uh, or where's that coming from? And say, well, okay, uh, like where the, they say teachable moments, like it's like, I guess there's a couple teachable moments in there. One is like, uh, and, and I wasn't a teachable child, so this is like part of it is uh, why I'm talking it out is like, uh, I don't know if if I could have if there was teachable moments in my life I wasn't uh, I was so my brow was so furrowed my ears could not hear them and there's just a lot going on so it's like when you have six kids uh, you're probably not sitting down to say well let's just try to have a teachable moment about your clothes and these uh, challenges we're having here. But I think there is like a couple, I don't know, I guess teachable moment is probably, this is what I'll be honest with you. A word I want to use is loving opportunity. Uh, so let's just, cause, cause, cause I guess teachable moment to me is an important word, uh, but maybe it does run counter to the podcast. So I don't want to roll up on teachable moment, but it, like what I mean is that, uh, Saying teachable moment, maybe if we're, what did I say, loving opportunity? Because they say, wait a second, there's nothing wrong, kid. Uh, or there's nothing wrong as an adult to feel that way. Uh, and maybe teachable moment says to me, this is again, <laughs> talk about uh, 
making a a double s out of everybody but in a real way this is like a kind of vulnerability or whatever there's nothing wrong with hoping your clothes are going to make things better or thinking your clothes like those are very natural thoughts and beliefs i guess so instead of a teaching teachable moment a loving opportunity would say yes yes and uh, because it's say hey like i see you feel that way and uh that's and that's okay i see i see the downsides maybe they'll come out in the the valentines uh who would have thought valentines about laundry would be about a different kind of love than uh the kind of a pitter patter of the heart but uh what, I guess what I'm saying is if I was my own child or if I was trying to, I mean, I'm not good with this with my daughter. She has her own sense of that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've seen the loving opportunity would be one to say, okay, let's, let's feel those feelings. Uh, the high highs and the high hopes that normally probably have a quick descent to somewhere when they're not met, at least for me of those expectations. Oh, okay. Those are some, that's some expectations, uh, really strong feelings, uh, that if you just get this right shirt, uh, everything else is going to flow from there. And, and those other feelings that's going to compensate for those or the kind of, if only feeling of, uh, if only, and we'll see this because some of the first Valentine's I saw or who I had read Valentine to was other people's clothes. Uh, that I kind of thought, uh, if I had those, I wouldn't have any problems, which again, I say, yeah, that, that's a normal way to thought, kid. I, I thought that way too. And I think that, well, I guess there's a funny thing because when I was looking at the pictures of the Valentine's, uh, I said that, that actually Valentine's work in a very similar fashion, a much cruder one though, especially in the eighties when I was given Valentine's out because, they were something, they're very commercialized. I would say cost-effective, probably. Like now, Valentine's Day is even more commercialized, but at a higher price point. But we would literally, I don't, I don't know if they do this. I mean, like everything at school, learning would stop for, for Valentine's Day. Which as a parent and as someone that knows kind of like about consistency and uh, getting into a rhythm... I say that is like uh, probably not the best. So you're going to take a half day of school for kids to give each other? Well, maybe not. I mean, maybe, again, it's a loving opportunity. And it, loving might be too strong a word for some people, so maybe a, com- a chance to, 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 to com- say compa- be compassionate and empathetic and say, oh, boy, this is a this is a tricky situation. Must feel like those are some feelings you're feeling there. You want to feel them? That you can feel them in your body too. So yeah. So so I guess that's where we're at with uh, the setup. I think there's probably more there, but I think like introducing kind of some of my thinking via the Valentines. Obviously, that's going to work better for all of us. And another thing I like about these kind of episodes when we do do them is that it is a rabbit hole situation. Let me open up Notion. That's what I've been using for my note-taking and organization. But uh, because there wasn't, I did not find like a good central hub uh, of Valentine's. So I'm just going to use image search uh, and then see what that brings up. Let's see what we got here. Just looking for some good ones. Uh, okay, so let's start with um, uh, this, like a couple from the Chipmunks, which were different. So the Chipmunks had an animated show back when I was a kid. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I thought I liked it. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I liked it a lot. And they usually had a holiday special. They had a holiday, you know, the holiday album. Uh, but it was Alvin, Simon, and Theodore uh, were the chipmunks, guaranteed to brighten your day. Were the chipmunks something something our way or something. 
But one one image I found on the internet a few places was uh, one of Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. They all wore or- oversized shirts. I've never seen the Alvin and Chipmunks movies uh, just because I guess my daughter wasn't at the right age and I guess because I have the hand-drawn chipmunks and chipmunk voices. It would just be too... Uh, it might be too jarring for me. It's not a judgment on the movies because I didn't see them or read anything about them. I like Jason Lee. But so the first card says, it has Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. I did forget that they all have oversized shirts. Simon is usually in a green and, or like a sea foam, maybe you would call it nowadays, with matching shoes. Alvin usually wears a red hat and a red shirt and has an A. And I guess Alvin's the lead. He's the trickster of the three of them, too. And then Simon is in a, like, a kind of a, a sandy, sea, kind of a sea blue as well, uh, uh, oversized shirt with glasses. And, uh, like, traditionally, uh, Theodore was the comic relief and uh, Simon was brains. But in this one, they're standing arm like arms around one another, and they're saying it says their shirts say thanks, f- thanks uh, for being. Simon's shirt says that, and Alvin's shirt says a, and then uh, or no, Theodore's shirt says thanks for being a real pal, and Theodore has real pal, and there's hearts blooming. And I think this is one of these one-siders where you'd take it on one side and then you'd write on the other side. And I guess this would be, I guess this one I'd write to my two friends that had the most fashion sense during, we'll bounce back in time. Uh, but my two friends, Pat and Chris, uh, who had the most, uh, the best fashion sense, I think, uh, in my opinion, th- those are two I aspired, uh, like I said, wow, if I could have clothes or dress like them, uh, I may be able to emulate their confidence and success. Uh, and you know, we had to go where we had to dress up for school cause I went to a Catholic school. So they, we had to be dressed up. I mean, none of this is in my skill set, but they always just had a sense of style they were able to work within the dress code. And uh, I, I mean, I guess like, look, just a way that I said, I wish I, I wish my, like, this is like the mistake I was trying to make to the kid and their loving opportunities here. Uh, so, but I guess like, how would we write that out? So, this, dear Chris and Pat, uh, thanks for being real pals, both real, but this one actually isn't either one of you. It's your, to your clothing. Oh, to your clothing. I guess this is already too long to fit on a Valentine, but I hope it all sums it up uh, because you're real pals. And part of a pal is uh, like a healthy kind of aspiration. Like uh, friends can also be leaders, can also be mentors, and even so in fashion. And I was always able, I was always somebody that wasn't able to do that on my own. And I kind of like would at younger ages be called a copycat or whatever. But this was when we were older than that. And we had moved beyond that stage of childhood. But you still, both of you, your clothes, both, oh, the clothes you you were, uh, you inspired me. uh, And sometimes you inspired me in a a way that was a little bit too much. I said, oh, if only... But I also said, wow, they really look nice. Uh, so thanks for, for that side of it. When you really looked nice, it closed of Pat and Chris. And, uh, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks for being a real pal. With real pals on the inside, though I was also looking at the outside and saying, huh, how would this outside make my insides feel? Uh, next up is, is, uh, like, uh, this one, sometimes we find the clothes in the Valentine and sometimes we find the Valentine for the clothes. Uh, so staying on Alvin and the Chipmunks, this is another Alvin and the Chipmunks one. And there's a big pink heart that we'll get to last. Then there's some red hearts and then there's Alvin. 
And Alvin is stepping in a red paint bucket. I guess he's been painting these red hearts. Uh, and he has a paintbrush that's spilling red paint. And uh, he, he has a look on his face as he's stepping in the red paint bucket like, oh, dear. And on the pink card, it says, I'll paint my way into your heart. But while we're in high school, I wanted to to just say, like, uh, that I can't that this one goes to smocks, uh, to shirts worn backwards, uh, old shirts or aprons. But most of the time, you brought in your parents' old clothes from home and you put them on backwards. This goes out to every smock everywhere, but also to Professor Joselle. Uh, because she really uh, cared about her students. And when, as soon as I saw this, and I was also already thinking of people from high school, I thought of uh, Professor Joselle. And she cared. Uh, even though I was not uh, an artistic student in the physical arts, uh, and I was tended to be very messy and not, not even intentionally messy. It's just my style. She was able to lean into that. And she was the one who said, uh, you're really good at making up titles for things. Like I could take something and no matter what it looked like, whatever it was, mixed media or mixed up media and or majority Elmer's glue and uh, yarn uh, but we probably would have been, if we were working with glue, even maybe hopefully I had a smock on. Is that what they're called? Smocks. Uh, word I don't hear anymore. Smock. I should wear one every day, but I would get too warm. But, uh, th- this one's for all you smocks and you, Professor Joselle, because uh, you painted your way into my heart. Uh, and you even said to my parents, said uh, back to school night one time, in front of me, Andrew's got a very good eye. He, you know, he's this, this stuff. I don't know. You said it in a much more, uh, loving, whatever we call that loving opportunity way, but you said, uh, maybe he could take photography, which I didn't do. And I wish I did. Oh, I did. Uh, but that was after I turned, you know, that, but so, um, I appreciate that. Cause you said, well, he's got a good eye in the ability to title things in a creative way. And that kind of, I never thanked you on the podcast before, Professor Joselle. So I'm so glad to have this opportunity. And uh, hopefully I'll try to track you down uh, because you really did care. And you, you set the example of what these loving opportunities are. And, uh, I really can't put, well, I guess I can't put into words how much I appreciate it because it probably did lead, was one of these things that led me to make the podcast that I make today that benefits so many people and has benefited me and helped me get to this point where I can realize how grateful I am. So you painted your way into my heart, really, uh, and all those smocks enabled us to do so. So that one goes out to all of you. Uh, next one, and uh, it goes uh, to uh, uh, this one. I, I just found is uh, another like the, the, this. This was a time when it was very uh, corporate. Uh, these uh, Valentines and stuff. So they were also a form of advertising, which kind of like it was like product placement you paid for which I got to say, I really respect and love uh, in some sense. Uh, so this one is uh, Ronald McDonald, and Ronald McDonald is waving. And uh, Ronald McDonald has his hand up, and then he's holding a giant heart. Uh, and it says it's a giant heart, almost the same size as Ronald, but it's also a sign. And it says, to my special Valentine next to Ronald McDonald. Oh, next, there's like a bit of a joke in there. I love you the best. So second best, uh, I didn't realize, <laughs> I just read it. Uh, but uh, st- so let's see, in the history, well, okay, so I do have something uh, that I, I guess I would say, not next to Ronald McDonald, but I have a hooded sweatshirt. 
and I'm pretty sure it's from the same company. Is there three versions of this sweatshirt in my life or two? I think there's three. And the current version, the middle version, I would say you were just a repeat of the first, or maybe you were still the first sweatshirt. Uh, and we'll get back to the first sweatshirt. But this second one I've had now, it's a gray champion sweatshirt. Now, this one I have, the current edition, is a non-cotton sweatshirt. So I may love you the best, uh, but this is kind of like about a journey into the past. So, And I guess I'll be honest, uh, I haven't worn you as much as lately because you just haven't, like, I haven't needed you. I'm sorry to say it in that clear way, but I have, have these thinner sweatshirts now. And you're a thick one, but not a super thick one. But you're made from those materials like that, I would say, are like plastic. And that is a huge, huge advantage you have because you you kind of are soft. Uh, like, you really are pleasure, pleasure to wear because you're soft. You, you don't feel the same as cotton. But a lot of times these uh, human-made fabrics can not feel great. Uh, but your inside has a really smooth thing. Or your outside is really smooth, like uh, smoother than cotton, but not in a way that feels fake or whatever. Like uh, you're nice to touch. And your inside, I'm not big on the insides of sweatshirts anyway. I know a lot of people are. So I like your inside, but holy cow, do you have a gigantic advantage over cotton? And what I would say is my first place sweatshirt, probably just due to relationship and time frame. You've been through with me through some tougher years. And I probably met you at TJ Maxx, where I meet so many of my clothes nowadays. Uh, about probably like a 100% chance, because uh, where else would you get a champion sweatshirt? Uh, because I definitely wouldn't have bought you online. I saw you, I said, wow, that's the kind of sweatshirt I wear. And I didn't even start a social media company because uh, you're gray and I don't know what. But anyway, holy cow, it does, do you deserve this and more? Because uh, you've been there. And, but oh, but I was saying, because, you know, it could be raining or a theme park ride. Like, you are the best sweatshirt to wear to a theme park, in my opinion, if you were slightly more packable. But anytime we know the temperature is going to drop below, say, 60 degrees, you're my number one choice, maybe even 65, because you'll keep me warm. But then if I go on a ride that has splashing water or it happens to start misting or light rain, I know you're going to keep me warm. And I know you're not going to hold water. Even if I take you off, uh, I'm not going to be carrying around like one of those cottony sweatshirts that's just soaked. Uh, and eventually you'll dry off. Uh, so you do, that's why you deserve this Valentine so much. Next up is Grimace, uh, also from uh, Ronald McDonald's. Uh, friend. Now, Grimace is purple. This version of Grimace has four arms, uh, uh, so I don't know if this is officially a licensed version of Grimace, so it's trademarked. And Grimace is all... It, so Ronald was holding uh, Ronald's sign on his left... Uh, no, his right side. Grimace is holding a sign on his left side. So I don't know if Grimace is left-handed like me. It would make sense. So Grimace is a furry purple creature, was shaped like a light bulb, though here he's more shaped like a, a meat wad with legs and arms, but purple. He's holding three pink hearts, and then he has a big white sign with black writing. That's a heart. Uh, and it says, Be My Funny Valentine. And this one goes out to... Uh, my a sport coat of my father's that I basically, I guess nowadays you'd say took without permission or you could use stronger things and never discussed it with my father, reappropriated. Or if we did discuss it, I was not listening at all. So, you know, again, great opportunity for me to apologize to my father for some stuff. 
But so, uh, this is, uh, like, uh, so I guess at some point this is like moving into, a, a, a positive moment, uh, where at some point my ability, my engagement at school and my comfort at school reached a point where I stopped caring how I dressed or I stopped caring how I dressed to fit in and realized I was not a person that was going to acquire, uh, like I didn't have the money to, like, we just weren't, even if I would have afforded it with another Valentine, we'll probably talk about this. I wouldn't even know where to go shopping anyway. And so at some point I just started mining old, like mining clothes, I guess doing my own uh, thrift shopping within the house with stuff that might not have been thrift clothes uh, and just taking them. And this sport coat was a big one and it was such a success. Uh, now, you didn't need to wear a sport coat, and barely anyone ever did at our school unless it was an occasion. But I found this plaid sport coat, uh, and it was an understated plaid, but still overstated. This was in the 90s, uh, that, uh, right? Yeah, kind of mid-90s, so late, ni- late 90s, mid-90s, I don't know. Uh, but it was like a, like a kind of earth-tone plaid jacket a dress jacket sport coat didn't quite fit me but i said there's something about and and, and, and to be honest i'd never see my father in it so reappropriating it uh without his permission i'm sure i'm sure like uh there's some more loving opportunities i'll have thinking about this and that i could have had in the past uh but so uh, the, like the, so this sport coat, uh, I wish I, I mean, I can picture it in my head. It's one of those few pieces of clothing that are really, really burned, burned, burned in my mind. And it, this, so this Valentine's for you. Cause it says, be my funny Valentine. And this was one of those things where sometimes people like, uh, I had a reputation for being a, a funny at school. Uh, and having a sense of humor, but sometimes it was also unintentional or it was just who I was. Like I was so off of, uh, I was so off from, uh, like my, my, my thoughts so differently than most kids, I guess that, uh, people would find it things I did hilarious, even if it wasn't intentionally hilarious, just cause it was so, like, uh, where when you reach a point Sometimes that's a good thing. I guess I didn't quite have the realization of that to lean into it a hundred percent, but maybe I could lean into it fifty-one percent. And this sport coat was one of those things. It, it's it was love at first sight, and it was a love uh, that was beyond my understanding because it shouldn't have been. It, it wasn't forlorn or forbidden love. I mean, it should have been forbidden because I was taking it without permission. And I guess the irony is the sport coat, even if it was a discounted sport coat, probably cost more than almost my entire wardrobe that I had, period. Uh, but it was work, you know, it was work related for my dad. But so I remember seeing you and saying, oh boy, like love at first sight, also your utility because of whatever material you were made of, you never got wrinkly. And you never really got dirty. I mean, I never cleaned you. But, uh, oh boy, had the kids at school never seen a grown man boy in a in a plaid sport coat before, except some sort of stylish plaid for some sort of holiday, like a Scottish. This was not like a Scottish tartan plaid or some sort of Irishy plaid or kind of like a Catholic school style plaid. This was a earth tone plaid. Uh, and one of my co-students, uh, one of the other kids, uh, that like, uh, that, uh, he, he's like, he was the first person to saw me and he's kind of like, uh, was so, he said, geez, you look like a used car salesman, uh, and or he had much of a funnier joke about it, and uh, he this was a kid who normally would like comment on on stuff like that. Uh, and I said, okay, well, at first I was self conscious about it, not because of him, but anyway, like, uh, and then a couple other kids uh, 
like most people were in disbelief that I was walking around school in this strange work but the other people, because I was just at that 51, 49 percent, uh, like people thought it was hilarious, but not in like they weren't laughing at me. They thought they were laughing with me, uh, since, uh, because, and I didn't realize that it took, like I did it out of ignorance and because I fell in love, I said, well, I got nothing else to wear. This will cover the stains on my wrinkled shirt. Uh, and uh, it'll give me one more layer of, uh, you know, distance from my classmates. And I like it. So I, I guess part of me, that 49 or 51% didn't care anymore because of whatever I was, whatever, had enough hormones uh, and I had enough, uh, it already given up on the school part of school. And this isn't in a sad way. This was like one of those almost healthy ways where I was uh, it, being my best self and I didn't even realize it. And so I wore that to school, and every, and then I, that's when I was doing some of the, uh, I was doing some acting for school, uh, I don't know, fundraisers and stuff like that. Uh, and so I really appreciate that sport code. I guess I'll have to talk to my dad about it. But you were my funny Valentine, and I didn't even realize it. Uh, so I, I got to thank you, plaid shirt. Uh, and I guess I'll get another card for another sticking in this era before we hop out of this era. Uh, is uh, another thing I just took from my dad. I almost used the S word. I took, took without permission. Reappropriated. And again, I never saw him wear this. So I don't know. Like sometimes he got clothes maybe as a gift. But he always got, he had, these were like nice clothes. Uh or maybe he bought it for work and it didn't work out, or maybe he bought it for a work event, or maybe somebody gave it to him. I never saw my dad go clothes shopping. So I'm not exactly sure uh, sure about that. Uh, but but uh, um, let's see. So let's see. Uh, uh, but this was a sweater. And it was the kind of sweater, it, it, it kind of has crossed eras. Uh, and I just, it was so strange to find it in my dad's clothing when I was going through stuff. Uh, it was a very preppy sweater. My dad had to get dressed up for work. Uh, but this was like the kind of thing you'd see like in a 90s movie or uh, jump back to the 70s movies. Uh, I'm thinking of like Bradley Cooper's character in uh, one of the wedding movies, I think, uh, it, it, like uh, when he was still like playing antagonist characters more. Or in like the 70s, 60s, 70s, like uh, college movies, the preppy type. It was very, but like a kind of a Cape Cod, New England uh Martha's Vineyard sweater, like you're hanging off a yacht. It had a V, it was a white, it was kind of like an eggshell colored uh, sweater, some sort of knit, uh, I guess like a nice cotton or maybe wool. And they had a V-neck, uh, but the V-neck had stripes of like royal blue and uh, maroon. Like the kind of thing you, you might see in someone you're attracted to of any gender like in their aspiration, you say, holy cow, now that person has style. They're like, uh, but for me, again, it didn't fit me. And it didn't really f fit my style, even though we had to get dressed up for school. Like, uh, I wasn't super, I was more uh, like unpolished would be my style, not preppy and not like, uh, like a, that's my style, unpolished, still is. And, uh, so this, this sweater, it was so again, and this was in the same era and it was an era where there was also a bit of feathering going on or whatever you want to call it, peacocking, uh, unsuc unsuccessful peacocking, uh, because they said, well, I got to figure out some sort of solution. If I could figure out the clothes part, uh, maybe that'll help me figure out like, uh, interacting with people that I'm attracted to, uh, didn't work. Um, which I think is a positive lesson. 
But I guess like in the loving opportunity side, I said, the part of you that was the part that would have worked if you could have connected to it more was the part of you that had this boldness. And then it reached this point of boldness to just say, well, I'll try anything. And I don't really care what people think of me anymore in a positive way. For the most part, 49.9% of me doesn't care. So... I'm just going to wear this sweater and see how it goes. Even And then I guess part of me was like, well, it doesn't fit you, though. It's too big. But I said, well, well whatever. Uh, now, it was a, like an eggshell-colored sweater. So this sweater, it's it, our relationship was briefer because, obviously, qu- very quickly. And I think maybe, maybe some of my siblings started wearing it, too. And... Uh, but this sweater, I just think about it. I just have, again, I don't have a stark memory of a lot of clothes I wore to school other than that sport coat. I mean, other than clothes that didn't go well, but those are ones I'm sorry. I just don't remember very much about you. Pants I ruined with exploding pens and all that. Uh, but so, yeah, that's for that sweater. This one, this this is, and did I say it? It's I don't think I did. It's Snoopy and Woodstock snuggling together with a big pink heart behind them against a red background. It says, happiness is being with you. So I thank you for that. Uh, now let's go back to a little bit earlier in high school. And uh, let's see, we got to cover some ground here because we got a couple more pieces of clothing to get. So I'm going to do this Valentine's kind of going out to uh, a couple different things, uh, pieces of clothing, uh, but a a piece of clothing, a very specific one uh, that uh, I guess maybe I was wearing in the similar kind of era. And this is, I guess there was a Snoopy character uh, that at a time, well, we got two of these. So we'll give you one. We'll give you, so I have two Valentines. I'm going to read them and then send them out. The first one, Snoopy had a character called Joe Cool. I did not get a chance to read a lot of Snoopy when I was a kid or Peanuts. Uh, But this one is Joe Cool, which means that Snoopy's wearing glasses and being cool. And Snoopy's throwing a yellow frisbee or receiving it. And it says, you don't have to practice. You're just naturally nice. Happy Valentine's Day. And then there's another one. This is not Joe Cool Snoopy, but he's pretty cool. Snoopy's riding a skateboard, a yellow skateboard, going pretty fast. Uh, Gigantic smile on Snoopy's face. Ears blowing. uh, Wind sailing. And then on Snoopy's head is Woodstock, whose hair is blowing, and Woodstock's riding it. And it says, Valentine, you're just my speed. So this first set of clothing goes, or first uh, Valentine, you don't have to practice, you're just naturally nice, goes out to my cousin's clothes, John. And my cousin John, uh, he, he he's uh, like, uh, he, we spent a lot of time together, especially like... Uh, like not like a, like leading up to grant like when we were like in middle school and uh, late grammar elementary school and a lot of treasured memories uh, especially at his house and Thanksgivings together and stuff like that but uh, one of the things and I never talked about this maybe I did uh, with him is cousin John uh, he was the oldest of three kids he had two younger sisters. And I don't know who took him shopping. I would guess that it was his mom and not his dad, uh, but that's just a guess. Or maybe he went on his own. So I'll have to, to, to have a conversation with John and his mom about this, Molly. But uh, John had what I would call a surfer style. Even though he lived in Syracuse, New York, uh, he had a surfer style, which was very a skater surfer, but more surfer which was aspirational, and he pulled it off. This isn't a criticism at all. Uh, so successfully that I was in constant uh, awe of it uh, and aspiration of it. Uh, and in the 80s, uh, this particular period of late 80s, like you're in the neon section of the 80s, but also 
this was a rise and now it's back and I don't know how long it's been and it's probably on its way out because there's even mall stores with uh, this kind of clothing. Uh, but I don't know how long if that, that's like a thing on its tail end, like the malls themselves. But so I don't know if these mall stores existed back then and that's where he got his clothes. Cause we would just never, I mean, it's not a criticism. We wouldn't have bought our clothes at the mall. We we would buy our clothes at the place. Like if we were shopping at, uh, what was it? TJ Maxx Marshall's, I think was uh, what we had. Like, that's where we'd get our clothes, or uh, Kmart. I mean, that's where we get, like, Kmart or whatever. I mean, you're buying for six kids. Or other places, depending on what was happening. But so, my cousin John, the two style, the companies at the time, the most expensive and most popular one was Ocean Pacific. And you called it OP, or OP Sportswear. And John wore a lot of OP. And then there was another company, which name escapes me, but was what I'm going to refer to here on my piece of clothing. That was like a little bit less expensive, but tried to compete with OP. And they had like printed shirts and shorts, but really like like a non-OP branded stuff. I mean, it would have like an OP on there somewhere. And John just really looked good, man. Like... Uh, he, even though he lived in Syracuse, New York, uh, he looked like he he uh, dressed like someone, I don't know, it's just a cool style, uh, especially in the summertime, which was when I saw more of him. So I don't know, I didn't, I didn't go to school with him, so I don't know what he wore to school. But yeah, he didn't have to practice because those clothes on John, they looked naturally nice. Now, Valentine, you're just my speed. And actually, this is a good one because it is a loving opportunity twofold. So the one I want to send the Valentine to first is a shirt I wore a lot uh, around that era. And I think we got it at Marshall's, me and my mom. uh, Or another, like, whatever, whatever you call that, a secondhand. I don't think they're discount stores, but... I don't know. I think we had Marshalls was what it was called. Uh, but TJ Maxx uh, is what I, I know it as now. And I found this shirt. Oh, boy, did I love this shirt. It was, it was, it, this was in the neon era, but this was not quite a neon shirt. It had an elect, it had stripes, uh, and it was bright, like almost neon of, uh, like it must have been like electric blue shirt, but it had alternating stripes so that it would have an electric blue stripe and then kind of a darker blue to kind of make it like understated. And then it had a neon yellow under collar. So the collar was like electric blue, but underneath it was like was a second collar or not a collar, like a, the circle that goes around your neck. Didn't have like a collar, like you put a tie on, but... Underneath that was a second collar that was neon yellow. And maybe like the cuffs of the shirt were neon yellow underneath. I don't know. But I wore that shirt so much. I'm not sure if it was Ocean Pacific or the other brand, one of the other brands. But that was my shirt, man. Like, uh, I mean, I couldn't wear it all. I would have wore it every day, but I was already too old to wear. I was already attracted to the girls in my class, so like uh, beyond like I was supposed to be best or whatever. So it was like, couldn't wear this every single day. Or maybe I was just like on my, where I was going through puberty. So I couldn't wear the shirt every day. Cause at that point, you know, okay, can't wear this every day because then it defeats the purpose of having the shirt. But this was one of those shirts where you put it on. I felt confident. Also, I know I wore this shirt for a filming of the Mickey Mouse Club. I don't think one that, uh, Justin Timberlake or Britney Spears were on, but I'd have to double check that. Uh, but definitely JC was on there, I think. Uh, and, uh, um, like, uh, they, like they made all my, I went with my cousin, John's sister, actually, Betsy, my sister, Sheila, and my brother, Carl, and they made them all wear neon shirts to be in the audience, uh, but I got to keep mine on because it was already neon enough. So the, that shirt is just my speed at the time. 
I would still wear it today, actually. It was a, it might be a little thick for what I like to wear today because it might have been a two-ply shirt. But that is just my speed. And I did want to send a, a sad one out because in a, in a, also a set of gratitude to my mom because, again, she's trying to do the best she can with six kids. And this was a different shopping trip, again, in this puberty era, which is tough for, for clothes and kids. Uh, but I like really needed some, and I think it was towards the end of the school year, and uh, so I had, uh, um, I was like, "Mom, I got to get some cool shorts or something." And uh, and uh, like she said, "Okay, well, you know, I think we could figure it out for next month or whatever. We'll go and we'll go to TJ Maxx." And again, I was thinking in my head, "Where's John get his clothes?" But I didn't think to ask or. Because I said, man, if I could get some shorts like John has, uh, like I can even picture him ahead. It may, it gives me this feeling of how good he looked uh, in his shorts. And again, their shorts particularly were understated. They're just like nice, uh, I don't know, non-print shorts, uh, but they would have nice colors. So, and they just looked good on him. I guess he was also like 6'3 or something. So it's like, but so... We went and we found two pairs of, oh, Gotcha. That was the other brand, Gotcha. And usually TJ Maxx had more Gotcha than Ocean Pacific. But they did have one pair. So we got a pair of Gotcha shorts. They were elastic waist. They weren't the coolest shorts, and they weren't dress shorts that uh, whatever, when we could wear shorts to school, which was only like the last week of school or for exams. These shorts, we were, they were more like... Uh, but they, those shorts were cool. I don't have, I mean, I don't, they're not Valentine level. But I also got this pair of light, and, and I guess because they were the only OP shorts that fit me. And you know the story. We've all lived this story in our own way, I think. Uh, so I got these OP shorts. They're light tan Ocean Pacific dress shorts. Kind of like, like a, not linen, but that type of style and material. And they were nice, man. And I wore them the first, and they just made me feel like, okay, these are nice, clean dress shorts. They're mine. And what happens, you know what happens. Uh, like I always chewed my pens, and uh, the first time I wore the shorts, uh, a black pen exploded in my pocket. Now, again, just ruined the shorts. Maybe. I mean, I guess, and, and, you know, this is one of those things where the kids are like, oh, boy, my mom, you know, just struggled to get me these shorts. And I was careless. And these, short, these shorts are no longer going to bring me confidence. And we did our own laundry, but emergency laundry. I mean, I guess, again, if I had a loving opportunity, I'd say, hey, those shorts, you're not going to get the ink out of the shorts. Are you going to be, com could you be comfortable wearing them without ink? Like, is that part of your boldness or with ink if you can't get them out? Uh, but, uh, it wasn't at that point. Uh, so I like tried washing them with tons and tons of bleach. Uh, and so I used so much bleach that the shorts actually disintegrated. Like when they came out of the washer or the, I think I probably washed them more than once. So maybe I tried once with stain remover and it didn't work. So then I tried just like, like I mean, who knows how much bleach I used, but enough that uh, brand new shorts that were somewhat well made. I mean, they didn't come apart at the seams, like the literally the fabric broke down. So, um, yeah, that, that, uh, like, uh, like the, um, like, I, I just wanted to send a Valentine in those shorts because I said, you didn't, like, I guess I could have given you a little bit better chance there. But this, I guess, I, like, I, I, like, I guess we'll have to return next Valentine's Day for more clothing Valentine's Days because there's other shirts and stuff I'm sure I missed. Uh, I know of one. And, uh, but yeah, remember, this is a loving opportunity to say, hey, yeah, well, you could maybe wear those shorts with the uh, ink stain in there. And, you, you know, there's a lot, like, uh, I guess the one thing, you, you, like, is a loving opportunity to say, hey, why don't you go to school tomorrow? And in a non-critical way, look at the other kids' clothes and in a non-aspirational way. 
And I don't think I ever did this, to be honest with you. So thanks for the opportunity. And to say, hey, how many kids your clothes are wrinkled or have grease stains on them like yours or ink stains? And do you think anybody, do you think, well, I wonder if it's a chance for you to be closer to them. Be like, I wonder how they feel if they have feelings about it or they don't even think about it. Just curious to think about that. And I guess the one from like being is like, I don't wonder if anybody even cares if your clothes look that way. I know it feels that way totally. And don't say that. Don't. Here's the thing: if you're a parent, don't ever say that to a teen. Uh, uh, you're like, I don't, does it really matter how you look? It does. Uh, I know it matters how you look, uh, but it also matters how you feel about how you look. Uh, so I guess it's instead of going in that direction, be like, man, is that some sort of statement? Like, I don't even care, man. Darn right, pens explode in my pocket every day. In my shirt pockets is to stain my body before multiple times. Uh, and I know my leg was stained multiple times too through my shorts, uh, even as an adult in jeans. So, yeah, you've been there. And I'm here to help you uh, by sending Valentine's Days, to Valentine's to clothes, uh, from scoots to you clothes. Uh, those are a couple of clothes and Valentine's uh, for this. Uh, valentine's season thanks everybody all right i want to thank everybody that reviewed the podcast recently uh hoops for hoops uh like sleepy time tea need my buddy every night love this podcast five stars thanks hoops uh ej 544 uh sleep savior uh that's from australia someone who struggled to sleep for years and tried every music podcast and book under the sun this is my only fail safe method to fall asleep can't remember the last time i made it to the end of a podcast episode awake your voice it takes a while to get used to but i'd recommend giving it a few tries although it's not possible though it's possibly not going to be everyone's cup of tea for me, the in, identical intro every week, but nearly identical intro every week, puts me at ease and strikes the balance, keeping my brain occupied, but not too much, thanks. Sleepy Boy says, uh, best podcast ever helps me sleep every night, wondering when a uh, doctor, who's coming back eventually, eventually. Uh, Megatron from Canada podcast uh, saves me. Uh, Scooch, you're the dream, lifesaver, thank you. Truly works, uh, catching some Z's from Canada. I've been suffering from insomnia, and this is a podcast. is the only thing that works, so thank you. Uh, Spirit of 76, more or less cured in my nighttime waking. Thank you. Save me from uh, many days. Uh, save so many days by helping me sleep through them. Thank you so much. Uh, so happy to help. Uh, thanks, everybody, who reviewed the show and uh, shared your honest opinions. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, Sleeping exists a free podcast uh, and grows the free podcast by listener, li- listener interaction. Uh, whether it's supporting the show or supporting the show financially or supporting our sponsors or spreading the word, writing a review, joining our referral program, that's how we're able to be here for you twice a week. I really appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, either up here, I'll let you know about something, uh, referral or some kind of sponsor. Thanks. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots with, uh, like a tuck you in uh, message here for our bedtime story podcast. Uh, we're trying out, uh, and I kind of said this, you know, free way to support sleep with me and bedtime stories from sleep with me is join our referral program, sleep with me podcast.com slash refer R E F E R. You get rewarded for introducing people to free version of Sleep With Me, including access to Sleep With Me Plus. Uh, but the, most of all, just think about what your favorite podcast is or one of your favorite podcasts uh, and then support that podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me, but just to support your favorite podcast uh, because they could use your support right now. Uh, and if you decide, oh, Sleep With Me is actually my favorite podcast, well, the, wow, wow. Uh, blushing seriously uh even though it's imaginary here in this context and support it at sleep with me podcast.com slash plus or listen to the show you love and, and see how they want to be supported thanks